Just don't let friends mess up their lives. That's the theme of this, theme of this morning's 411 with a look at what some call questionable characters in the big screen hit Sex of the City from the hugely successful series. Joining us now to talk about the different characters in the movie is communication expert Meryl Running. It's good to have you here. We just heard the music there on Sex in the City. The movie is doing great. Mm -hmm. But you know what it does? It starts the dialogue about relationships and how we're all dealing with each other and if we're doing it properly or not. Well, one of the big things people love about the movie is the way the women in the movie relate to each other. Really good friends. They can always count on each other. And I'm all for it. I love watching that. But I do take issue with one way that friendship plays out in the movie. And that is that, yes, they're there to support each other when they have troubled times, when their relationships with men uh, hit the rocks. But there's not a level of truthfulness that is really important in, in a personal relationship. Without giving too much of the movie away, what happens is, is there, there are more than one um, storylines of betrayal in this movie and, and how uh, they handle that and some of the girls give their opinions and others don't and one of your themes is say what you mean, mean what you say and don't be mean when you say it. Absolutely, that's the foundation of friendship and so when we see people that we really care about making big mistakes in their lives as happens in the movie it's up for up to us to say something it's part of friendship now friends tell each other what they need to hear not mm -hmm. just what they want to hear and also again without giving too much of the storyline away there were several months when some very close some consider best friends didn't say exactly what they meant and but they had one of those typical if you're a sex in the city fan they had one of those typical looking around the table and you could tell you could read by the expressions on people's face they wanted to say something and they didn't and they didn't and so they allowed each other to possibly sabotage uh, a very important part of their lives rather than speak up and it's interesting in the movie what they had happen was uh, it all came out in a fit of anger. I don't know why we seem to think that we have to get really angry to be able to tell the truth to people we care about. Or start a fight so that you can start talking. Exactly, yes, yes. It's a, it's a distorted sense of loyalty because what we really need to do in our friendships is be loyal to each other's well-being and highest good, which sometimes means risking the relationship. One of the most important parts of an intimate relationship is dealing with perhaps betrayal. And this movie mm -hmm. talks about that. How do we know when we're crossing too much of the line, though, and perhaps maybe we're sticking our nose where it doesn't belong. Well, again, I refer back to my philosophy with Speak Strong and, and my book's power phrases, which is to say what you mean and mean what you say without being mean when you say it. So it's, it's, just, it's a level of truthfulness and considering the other person's well-being. Now, it, it means you don't pretend that you approve of what someone's doing when, in fact, you don't. When you see someone walking towards a train wreck, you say, hey, you know, I see a train wreck coming. You know, I'll support you here in your decision, but you need to know what I see happening here. Oftentimes, when it comes to our closest relationships, we sort of venture into opening a discussion. We get scared away, or if it doesn't go too well, if it does sort of lead to um, sensitive feelings being hurt, then we back off and we may never ever try it again. But it's a process. You don't try yes. once and stop. Exactly, right. And, and we, we, we don't ever pretend that we think or feel what we don't. I mean, we can support each other and love each other as we watch them make mistakes, but we don't pretend that we think that they're doing something. Now, like a lot of the other parts of the theme in the movie, and we're showing some clips of that movie, have to do with defining what love is, what marriage is, how they are copacetic with each other or not, and what happens when that when that goes <laughs> goes wrong and then you realize you start to realize by seeing all these different characters and how they're dealing with things just like you would uh, watching your friends and family what their perceptions of what they're expecting they're getting or not getting mm -hmm. when you get into the, into these close commitments well and what we see happening in the movie is people experiencing a betrayal and shutting completely down and staying focused on what happened to them rather than having any idea or concept of well how might I have contributed to this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, play, looking at my own role, because if I want to be sure this never happens again, well, I need to be sure that I take charge of responsibility for how I made it not safe for people to be truthful or, or how, how I played into it as well, which they all discovered potentially too late, fortunately. Not too late. The huge success of this film mm -hmm. says something about what our idea of committed relationships are in pop culture, do they not? Oh, I definitely think that it does. And I also think that it's, it's largely successful because as women, we love our friendships. And it's beautiful to see those friendships mm -hmm. happening out on the screen. Mm -hmm. It's even more beautiful if you see us really support each other in ways that'll help us live our lives in a very satisfying way.
All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Again, uh, speakstrong.com and the book, which you can order in bookstores or get off that website, is called Power Phrases. Thanks so much, Meryl.